growing up, I was into street shit. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I hey, wasn't going to Welcome back to another episode of Lit Podcast. You know what I'm saying? We bring you the hottest artists in the city. We bring you the legendary, legendary artists in the city. Sorry, man. I'm, trying, I'm getting lit right now. You know what I'm saying? But... I want y'all to tune in and really, really, really tune in today because we got somebody special, man. You know what I'm saying? We got somebody who done stamped and cultivated, you know what I'm saying, Dallas history. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know that, you know what I'm saying? I got somebody out here, man, that done put in work that a lot of people ain't just shed their they eyes on, but they finna get ready to shed their eyes on now. You know what I'm saying? This man done put in work, man. He done had songs with people you can't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my favorite, you know what I'm saying? Too Short, you know what I'm saying? Like they got a banger, you know what I'm saying? And like this podcast is for the people out there that just think that Dallas just only started in one era and not knowing that Dallas I always had an era since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I, people always paid wave and made wave. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for people like this man right here before I say his name, you, it, it, it'd be hard for a lot of y'all to be in these clubs doing what y'all doing, getting radio spins, you know what I'm saying, or getting these type of connections. So today I would like to bring in no other than my boy, Rifleman. Well, 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 <laughs> Take you on the road with me, man. Yeah, man. You know I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. On the road with me. Man, I, I have to, man. I got to bring y'all in. I got to bring y'all in right, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That, and then it's from the heart, you know what I'm saying? Nothing that. I do is scripted, you know appreciate what I'm saying? That. So I just want to, for my fans out there, and for the people out there, for the onlookers out there to know yeah. who you are and where you're from. Uh, well, I'm straight out of Dallas, Texas, man. Really from this side of, uh, of the city, you know what I'm saying? Cross 20 is what we like to call it, but... Uh, I started, I grew up uh, in South Dallas first, at okay. roots in South Dallas. And then uh, we moved out to uh, DeSoto probably in the late 80s. Okay. Um, but while we was out here, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like it, it is now at all. You know what I mean? I think you've heard people talk about that, but it was a right. different city at the time. Right. So I remember uh, we moved out here. The first weekend we moved in, now, now, now granted we're in a house in a neighborhood that ain't been built yet, you know, new development. We the only house in that in that little place. I appreciate that. Oh, you're fine. And uh, so the first weekend we move in, bro, it's a crazy story. Somebody write, uh, "Nigga, go home," and we don't want niggas all over our uh, fence and driveway and everything, right? So uh, I kept going to school in South Dallas. Okay. Even though we was living out here, because we just didn't know. With the situation, was, right, right. But uh, other than that, man, I just kept my roots in really both areas, really South Dallas and. and man, Soto. he said the boy, the Soto had them good old boys yeah, back then. It, it was it was a different time then, but it changed over time. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was it was different. So my roots are basically both areas. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of South Dallas, I don't know if you probably remember, but my uncle had a uh, store out there in South Dallas called Big Daddy's. Mm. <coughs> Put it by Lamar. I know Big Daddy's, yeah. Yeah, that's my uncle right there. That's what's you up. know what I'm saying? For he sold it and everything like that. That's what's up. Yeah, my uh, grandfather had businesses in South Dallas and yeah. houses. Uh, my grandmother had daycare centers in South Dallas. So we was just, that was just our, that was just our area. You know what I'm saying? So so what yeah. it like growing up in the sunny south though? You know what I'm saying? Man, it was it was cool, man. I mean, it was it was it was cool walking to school and went to Charles Rice. So I had to walk to Charles Rice at X Line Park, and uh, it was just fun. You right. know what I'm saying? We were kids. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like it was different because when I started going to school out here, mm -hmm. it just was different. Like I, I wasn't really used to going to school with white kids and uh, you know having to interact with them because. It just it just didn't happen in the South like that. Right. And um, but it was it I mean it had its ups and downs, but you're a kid, so you just thinking everything kinda kinda cool. I mean, kinda you know cool, I mean? right, until you get to that pinnacle yeah. and be like, Oh, okay, this is what and it's then about. Now, I know, now I know where they're going at this house. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know why this house stay jumping all the right. time. You know once what I'm saying? I know what she's doing on the block. Yeah. I know why you walking. I know there. why you always out here. You know, once you yeah. get that part out. You know, you look older then, but as a kid it was it was cool. Right. So I right, so when you growing up you know, at that time, what was the musical influence around that time? You know, who was who was you listening to coming up to make you want to say, I, I, <coughs> I like music too, I want to jump into it. Because I know back in that time when I was coming up too in the 80s, you know, rap was new. <coughs> yeah. But we was, I was jamming Prince, you know, yeah. all that type of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, my pops was a, a DJ. Oh. Yeah, my pops was a DJ. So he had a lot of records at the house. So. 
<laughs> I would get his record player, put the records on. Okay. Trying to scratch on them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting yelled at for scratching up the records and shit and uh, looping them, you know what I'm saying? Even as a kid, like I started looping records at like six, seven years old. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Just looping records, making beats, you know what I mean? So I had I always had a passion for music. And then, but in the hip hop world, it would had to be Ghetto Boys number one. The Ghetto Boys were like the most influential group for me. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because they were just closer and I just like the way they rap, you know what I'm saying? But then one day, I want to say I was probably, I was young, but my aunt had a friend that was dating some guy that was in this group called the Feel a Fresh Crew. You know what I'm saying? So they took us to a, a, a talent show they did, right? Okay. It was Dr. Rock and Feel a Fresh Crew. And so they get on stage. They start rocking. I mean, the whole place was going crazy. You'd have thought it was like NWA right. or whatever, but they were just going wow. Girls were screaming, they jamming. I was like, damn, for real, these niggas is like <laughs> from here. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. So I met them backstage afterwards, and we chopped it up. I rapped for them, and uh, that's why I was like, man, this is what I want to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get involved. Like that, so that was that was probably the biggest jumping out point. You know okay. what I mean? Okay, so at that time it was really the, the uh, ghetto boys, and then trink them down. You started seeing your local acts yeah. like um, Feel a Fresh Crew. Oh yeah. So at that time, man, who else in Dallas, or what was the music scene like in Dallas at that time? <coughs> like what was really going on? Like how was people yeah. finding out who was doing music? Who you know where was the spots jumping at? Well, the record stores, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, take it back to the South, Mr. Blues. Like, he, we, we would go to Mr. Blues all the time and look at the posters on the wall or who was coming out. Or a lot of times you would find, like, you know, uh, I mean, I'd go in there sometimes as a as a youngster and Scarface would be there, or Lil' Jay would be there, or uh, Uncle Luke would be there. You right. know, they used to always come to Mr. Blues because he, he had it all. You know, he was like the hub for music in Dallas, is right there on MLK, right in the South, and um, and it's crazy that this, that history right there, how they like yeah. they took it away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I see they don't remodel that whole mm -hmm. little strip. You know? Yeah, Mr. Blues was a spot, but the record stores, you just kind of would see what's on what's on the wall or what people are talking about, and that's kind of how you. And I was wanting to hear everything. Right. I wanted to hear people from different cities and different coasts, so I really just soaked it all in. Right. So I would cut grass, I would uh, do stuff around the house, right. and every Tuesday I would be buying whatever's new. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the store just buying whatever's, whatever's coming out, whatever's hot, and just listening to it over and over and over and over again. So yeah, okay, so, all right, so, I mean, I just I did too with my tapes and mm -hmm. stuff like that with the records. So, at this time, where was y'all, where was y'all, besides the record stores, who was providing venues for y'all to express y'all talents, you know what I'm saying? Because I know yeah. that was kind of hard at that time, you know, New yeah, York at yeah. the parks and right, all that stuff right. like that. Well, I was young then, so I really wasn't getting out that much, but right. I did start, um, I created outlets, so I started DJing. Oh. Like when I was in uh, middle school and high school, I, I was the DJ. So if you had a party or, or whatever, we were showing up, you know, myself, my, my brother, my crew, we were showing up, you right. know what I mean? And so that started to catch on. So I started doing parties in different hoods. And so we were kind of making these venues. So when we DJ parties, we would do freestyle contests. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We get somebody cousin versus, you know, the neighborhood dude. Right, right. So we would be in Highland Hills and the Grove. And it was just fun, man. So that was kind of the first thing because it really, I, I couldn't get in any clubs back then. Okay. So we had to kind of just create our own little. All right. So, so the house parties was jumping. House parties was the, the house parties. House was parties was the lit. Yeah, yeah, that was the lit house right there. Was the Man, I, I, I'm a boy I say, especially in Oak Cliff, them house parties mm -hmm. were the lit going over off of 8th Street and everything. Yeah. It was all over there, man. Yeah. It's a young nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody get dropped off. Mm hmm. I know, a lot like, of people used to get dropped off. You I know what I'm saying? I get dropped off. I had. Or that bus. My house speakers. <coughs> my turntables, all that shit, and I had, I had to get somebody to drop me off, sit, I get set up, get paid, come back and pick me up. So basically, through your journey, you already had that, that passion for music and DJing. Yeah. So, when you, okay, let me go back because you, I remember you saying too that you freestyle for a Feel a Fresh crew. Yeah. Mm hmm. 
wait a minute, how did you even know, or what, was you already writing then? Was yeah, you I, was already, I was already writing, man. What? As crazy as it sounds, like, I, I, I've been a good writer for, not just writing rhymes, but stories and all oh, that's kind of a passion of mine when right. I was a kid. And so, uh, I was already writing back then. Okay. Like, like I was telling you, I was making those loops with those uh -huh. records. So I had figured out how to use um, the jam box I had to take the loop and then rap over the loop. So I was making like little tapes, you know what I'm saying? Demo. That type of thing. So I was already kind of doing that as a young age. And uh, my goal was to just get it in Mr. Blues. That was it. If I can get the tape in Mr. Blues, I I'm in there. So, so I bring them up there, they play them. I um, mean, you need to go back and fix that up. Uh, you need to work on that. And um, so I just kept just bringing up new tapes. So Mr. Blues and them, and you tape, and, that, and, that, and that's some real stuff because, you know, a lot of people don't even tell you that. So back in that time, Mr. Blues is already telling you what you need to do to get your yeah, stuff to bring yeah, it back. It was, up it was him. He had some people in there working in there that were a little bit younger. Uh-huh. So uh, I kind of became real cool with them. I would bring stuff up there all the time for them to right. listen to. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they give me the real. So how did you know when that, that when you was ready? Um, that's a good question, man. Probably, uh, I knew I was ready because, you know, I, the stuff I was making was sounding good. Right. Like, I didn't have any equipment. Right. But for some reason, when we would put it all together, it just, it sat, people would be, would be surprised. Like, right. you made it on that? Y'all did it this way? Like, yeah, man, we looped it and record on the tape and pause and record again. And like, we was doing like, we was just coming up with different ways to get it done and uh, it just started sounding good. Then one day I brought this mix in there where I mixed uh, a Scarface record, but I can't put it all together. It's like you featuring him. This, this is, and this is before computers, folks, okay? This is like real tape. Right, right. You know, to my pause and record right. type shit. Right? You gotta make sure it's on yeah, point. I know it's over some of y'all heads, but there were no computers back, back then. Like right. That, you know what I'm saying? Not in our house. Not in know? the house. Yeah, yeah not in the house. house. No. So, long story short, I took up there, played it, and they were like, ah, oh, that's jamming. You know what I'm saying? They kept like saying, oh, this, that's tight. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And they would play it and play it. And they let me sell the tape out of there. And uh, so I was like, okay. Now. So this is your first time when you you getting it in there. Yeah. You know, Mr. Blue's like, okay, yeah, we can put yeah. it in there. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I had made a cover, drew a cover. Right. Made a tape and was selling the tape out of uh, Mr. Blue. This was probably around 14, 15. All right. Yeah. So, okay. So now, how did Mr. Blue set you up for us? putting your record in that store, you know what I'm saying? What yeah. was the process? Was it, was it, you know, okay, I'll put this in your store and whatever you sell, you make the money or he took a cut? How did that work? It was, uh, it was consignment. So, uh, I would get $7 every tape. Okay. Yeah, seven. They would sell the tapes for about $12 and I would take seven, you know what okay. I'm saying? So, that's how we did that. Now, it wasn't like I was selling hundreds and thousands of tapes. Was, but yeah. as a 14, 15 year old. Right, you in there. I'm in there. That's all I really, that's all right. what the goal was. I right. didn't really want thinking any bigger. From an on, from yeah. an onlooker, they wouldn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially like, you gotta realize, like, at one time, I was an onlooker. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm going into these record stores, I, I don't know how they got in there. I just right. know that's, that thing is in the record store. And whoever that is, he's got some money, he famous, or whatever. <laughs> he doing something. Yeah, he doing something. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so what was that feeling? What was that feeling like having that in there on consignment? And when did you get your first sale from that tape? And it made you say, like, okay, let's go. Uh, it was dope, man. It was dope. You couldn't tell me nothing at the time. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know right. what I mean? That was it. Um, and then we just kept, like, my other partners were getting get more involved. So now they were coming over to the house and they spent a the night in my crib. We we stayed up all night making uh, songs and uh, freestyles, making tapes together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like at my crib. And uh, and that's kind of how we just started like getting better, but getting better. So by 16, um, this guy uh, ended up signing a deal with this record label in the cliff. Um, they were on 50th Street called 50th Street Productions. Okay, 50th Street. Okay. Yeah, 50th Street. So, me and my partner, we 16, we signed a record deal with them. That's when we started kind of really getting into the whole business of, okay. of the rap game. So, what was, the, what was going down at 50th Street? 
It was just a dude had a studio, man, in the crib. You know, it was, okay. it was like he had the equipment, he had the little, he had set up a little recording booth with right. the plexiglass and all it in the crib right there in the hood. And so everybody would come over there and record. So yeah. he had like an R&B group and we the first rap group. So we clashed a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I can make beats, you know what I'm right. saying? My potter can make beats. Just We just need you just to open the door and let us, let us cook. But we 16, so he like, Nah, this is the beat. I made the beat. Do these type of songs. Oh, he so, full uh, control, control. Yeah, yeah. So that didn't go good. Nah, nah. So where did y'all start? So what, what, where did y'all go next? And who was a part of the crew? With what was your crew? Who was all part of the crew? Uh, that was all of us, man. Me, uh, my brother, of course. Uh, J.K. Uh, J.B. Really, that's how the downstream click kind of got formed. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, D-Lab, Rob Mack, all that. I was going to get to yeah. who was all part of that downstream. Yeah, that's how, that's how it really started with okay. us back then. And we just kept kind of evolving over time. But uh, that's how it started. It was right. kind of just us at the time. Yeah. Okay, so where did y'all go next? Man, uh, what was next, man? So I got out of that and uh, I ended up getting a manager. Uh, about 17, 18, this cat. And um, he managed me and he managed, uh, I don't know if you remember DeVille. DeVille, the real singer? DeVille? The singer DeVille? No, nah, he was a rapper. He was a rapper named DeVille. Now he did uh, Party Chaser and a yeah, couple yeah. other things later on in life, but he was a rapper at the, first. The one he with Corey or something? Yeah, 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 that's what, that, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, DeVille, yeah, yeah. He was a rapper at first. Yeah, so. he was a rapper, yeah, okay, yeah. So we were kind of on the same, uh, we wanted the same manager at the time. Oh, you okay, know what I'm okay. And uh, so we tried that route, you know, but just, you know, it, it was cool. We did a couple of studio sessions, but nothing really kind of uh, Trans came out of yeah. 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 Transpired from. Yeah, but it was cool though. Okay, so, all right. So who at that time was doing music in Dallas? You know what I'm saying? When y'all was coming yeah. up and really trying to put this out, who was y'all, you know, influences and, right. and, who, and who was y'all was like, oh man, I, man, these dudes right here dope. I'm trying yeah. to, you know, it was really like uh, Nemesis was first, you know what I'm saying? Snake and uh, Big Al, all of them, man. Nemesis was really first for me, but uh, really it was it was what Blow and Cotton was doing. Okay, that caught my attention. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, like uh, I was I was stalking them niggas. I was like, hey, look here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk real. about it. I was, I was like, hey man, I need to be here. You know right. what I'm saying? But anyway, it's a that's a whole nother story, but uh, they were really doing it at the time. Like, Killer Cottonfield came out, so I was like jamming that. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm like, these niggas is here. You right. know what I'm saying? So I tried to figure out how can I get to that situation. Yeah. yeah. And how did you get to that situation? Uh, all right, so the first time, it's, it's a crazy story, man. So the first time, like when you, when you were that young, the CDs had the addresses on the back. You ain't yeah, lying. You ain't with the number and all. Tag. Yeah, had everything. Yeah, had everything. So, you know, so I would call. I would send tapes. Everybody, you know. Right. The big ones to rap a lot to everybody. So I started sending them tapes. Like, all the time. But I wasn't getting no response. So I was like, all right, cool. So they had a show one day at, uh, man, what's the name of that place? At the ranch. It was Cottonmouth and Blowfly. It was a really real show, so I go. Okay. I wait for these niggas to get off stage, and I walk right up on like, say, man, look. <laughs> you know, so I've been sending my tape. <clears throat> I'm trying to see what's going on, and so a dude at the time, he was a manager name was Bo, Bo Blunt. Okay. I don't know if you know Bo Blunt, but no, nah, I don't know Bo Blunt. Okay, he managed a lot of the older, what the uh, uh, OG acts back in the day. Okay. So he managed like Cotton and Blow and. A few other people too, pimps of all them. So uh, I, I I got his attention. Right. So he gave me his number. I called him every day, and uh, he finally picked up and uh, rap for him and all that. And so he called Twenty Four K, who owned uh, Real to Real. Called him on the phone on three way. That's how we got introduced. Okay, okay. Twenty four K. Shout out twenty four K. So yeah. when you okay, RP. Man, rest in peace, man. That's crazy, man. How a lot of yeah. uh, people who don't 
you know what I'm saying, done put a lot of stamp into this history in Dallas and done passed away. It's a yeah. lot. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. You know, uh, so when you got introduced to him, mm -hmm. what was the what was the feedback? What, what, what yeah, was so that, that, that's the funny part. So I rap for him on the phone, right? Right. He's like, all right, that was that was cool. That was cool. I'm gonna get at you, but he don't get at me. You know what I'm saying? Like he don't call me. So I'm like, all right, okay. And so uh, the funny part of the story is. Me and my partner JB, we've been knowing each other. You know, we started down street, clicked together. We've been knowing each other all our life. Right. So I tell him the story about what's going on. He like, man, that's my that's my first cousin. I said, man, you lying? He said, that's my first cousin. <laughs> I said, nigga, let's oh, go today. Boy. So we that's... left and went straight to that nigga crib. And I popped up like my nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, okay, you okay? Now I know who you are and yeah. who. And it was on. After it was that. home, yeah. it was home, man. Say, I did that 10 tough. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to go through all of it. Hey, man, sometimes they would say that yeah, politics man. is all about who you know. You know what I'm saying? That's just yeah. what it is. So, let me, okay, all right. So, that was cool, yeah. Where did you get the name right for man from? Where they come from? Man, really from, uh, honestly, from the, I was a fan of the TV show. The actual right yeah, for man? I was a fan okay. of the TV show. All right. On the cool, you know, I watched it a lot when I was. Younger, I didn't go by that at first. First, I was uh, my DJ name was DJ Playboy. DJ first, Playboy, yeah. that was my DJ name. And then uh, I had the Playboy piece, and I was I was doing something then. But then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Playboy chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Long, you, feel me? you know what, I'm you know what that means? You know what I'm yeah, I'm gonna get you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and then I used to use uh, Big Shot as a rap name. And then uh, I just switched to Rifleman. Rifleman. Yeah. And that stuck. Good. And I see you took out the E. Yeah, took out the E. Yeah, you yeah. took out the E. You know what I'm saying? You went ahead and played with it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. And you know the history behind Rifleman, don't you? A little bit. A little bit. Bad Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Black, Black man. Black guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, so it's so it probably just meant for you to go ahead. And yeah, just, man. It was, you know, it was, it was, uh, it, it caught a lot of people off guard uh, initially. You know right. what I'm saying? Because, like, okay, well, it caught their attention right away. Right, right. But then I had to make sure that the music uh, kept their attention. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, man, you gotta remember, I just walked into the lines then. You feel me? Right. So I'm, I'm walking in there, I'm, I'm going to suit over Blow, and uh, we know how Blow get down. I'm like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so it yeah. wasn't like I could just come in there like right. half step. You know what I'm saying? I had to be. Yeah, you had to be up part because I exactly. remember that Killer Cotton feel when I heard it too. I was just like, "Gotta come sharp, man." Ooh, wee, man, that was a beat. Yeah. But you like you and held Lord your own. You know, Lord just dropped the death before the song. That yeah. was out at the time. Okay, when we first the death before the song. Yeah, and that was a monster, man. Yes, that yes, was a monster on the street. Yes, you know what I'm saying, man. What, what, okay, all right. Because it's so much. Yeah, it's, it's so much. So let's see how I want to uh, get there. All right. What did you always want to be before being a rapper or music or anything? Man, uh, I can't say nothing in particular besides just uh, making some bread. Making some bread. That was it. Yeah. I just I just knew I was gonna make a lot of bread. You know right. what I'm saying? Just you know, that's what I want to do. Just un real entrepreneur about yeah. everything. So, but the music was just a passion of mine, and uh, that was the first thing that kind of kicked off. Right. So, uh, so that's why. I, I still stick with it now. Okay, so when you sign the real, real, yeah, when you get here, mm -hmm. first project, so that's uh, Blowfly. What you need? What you need? Okay. Yeah. So actually, we got that. Me and my brother got there together, and uh, we were making beats. Uh, so we were already kind of like selling beats to different people and everything. Had a track record already a little bit uh, for some songs, and then so when we got there, we started working on Blow's album, What You Need album. So we produced it. Uh, Snake did two tracks, I believe, and then we did the rest. Oh, so that? Yeah, we did the rest. Okay, slap me. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it was good, cool because, because uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, what, you know what, what I'm saying. What was great about it for me? Uh, number one, I'm working with Blow, who can rap his ass off. And number two, Snake is teaching me how to engineer. You know what I'm saying? It mix and all of that. So, so, so you got, so you, so you, <laughs> so you got yeah. blessed with the knowledge. I got blessed. I mean, yeah. It was like he couldn't turn it down. I, right. I was there every day. Me and my brother both. We there every day. We making beats. 
my brother really just started just like killing it on the beat. So right. Just like he just started coming with it. So he doing that. I'm engineering. I'm trying to record. I'm trying to learn. We figuring it out. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, we recorded that and mixed it and all that. Yeah, Snake. Snake was right there. He helped us out. And that was your introduction. And that was your full introduction of Red or Real. Basically, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that and the Red or, and that's some that's some deep history because a lot of people don't give a lot of producers respect yeah. or engineers respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes a lot to really create and make an artist the sound. And then you I'll also you rapping that. too. You uh, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, yeah you know. keep trying to throw those raps in there. So yeah, it was good, man. Yeah, that's what's up. So when you so what made you decide to say, okay, I want to do a solo project? Uh, really, man. Uh, I just felt like it, I felt like it was time, you know what I'm saying? And I was excited about doing it, man, and um, I was just hyped, man. It was just I was in a perfect situation, you know right. what I'm saying? Honestly, it was just you know the first the first day the first day we hook up. Matter of fact, the second day I go to his house, I get on, we we rock it. The second day I'm in I'm at the Bronco Bowl uh, big show, right? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. We, we perform, right? You know what I'm saying? We perform. So we got to go out there and be blow hype, man. And uh, we, we just got there yesterday. Right. We don't know all the songs, you uh, know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, uh. And uh, it was a wild experience, man. But it was like the second thing. I'm like, damn, I'm, you know, I'm doing it. Right. It's us, Scarface, uh, a few other people on the show. Okay. So it was it was dope. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good situation. So, so I'm ready to do mine now. Who, who putting the show together? This is the same manager that you, you were talking about? That's, that's, this was 24. 24 was putting all that together. Okay, so 24 yeah, was putting 24 all this together. Put together. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. Make yeah. Sure. yeah. Real, the real was him, you know what I'm saying? Right. He, it, that was all him, so he was putting all the plays together. Right. Yeah. So right now, okay, now I'm, I'm trying to jump ahead. I'm yeah. tired, but so who's who's controlling Where the Real now? Where the Real now is really uh, me and Blow are doing most of the work right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like so y'all keeping it alive. We carrying it on the list. Already. Yeah, straight up. Nah, that's real shit because a lot yeah. of people won't even do that. They'll go yeah. on to something like something brand, brand new, brand new. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all keeping that lick. That's what's up. Yeah, got yeah. you, man. Got man, you. shout out. Shout out to you. Uh, uh, shout out to you two times. And shout out to both fly two times. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's some real shit to keep something going on. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, we had to, man. It was just it was just the right thing to do, man. You know? Right on. So, you saying y'all doing the show? You want to pull up? Yeah, yeah man. Let's pull up. Sure, right, pull up, man. man. I see you got the rock. Rock saw over here, man. What's up with both with this rock saw, man? Yeah, man. Pick up your rock saw and stoves, you know what I'm saying? Tell them, uh, tell them I sent you. Man, that boy brought you me a saying? bottle. You know what I'm saying? I got me a bottle. You see that? Yeah, man. Tell him. Hey, yeah, man. Oh, you know where this going down. Rock saw, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 hey. If we're gonna do it like this, we're gonna pull up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, rock, hey, rock saw, my man, good. So. Y'all take care of man. Man, for real, man. Y'all, yeah, take come on. Me. I got y'all. I advertise this all day, man. Put yeah, links down me. at the bottom. Y'all make sure y'all go cop y'all some rocks off. You know what I'm saying? It's going down in the triple D. You know what I'm talking about? Good talk. All right. So, and we got a special guest here today. So, man, y'all definitely got to roll up and get lit. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for everybody tuning in. Everybody in the chat. What's up, nigga? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, all right. So, the process just out, man, because... Yeah. I ain't gonna tell you how I got your album. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you how I got your album, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just know that when I did get it, yeah. you know what I'm saying, somebody got me. You know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> and I had to go buy it. So okay. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? So that that's just what that is. But yeah. the, the process of that album. Man, that album was uh it was a it was a great time, man. It was like Things are really like going so good. We we coming off of uh, that what you need, you know what I'm saying. Right. So the sound is like starting to catch. We had a pretty unique sound for that album. If you go back and listen to that album, the sound of it sounds different than what anything sounded at the time. So right. uh, when it came to working on mine, you know we were kind of in a good position because we were doing stuff. You know what I'm saying. Uh, Dig that was on the radio. Right, right. You know what I'm right. saying. So like. We getting shows, Sometimes, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. <laughs> shit was rolling, so it was like, then this is perfect. So, and we already like uh, doing shows, you know what I'm saying, with these guys. So it was, a, it was like, man, let's work on your album. I already had the beats ready. Uh, I had most of the songs already ready, 
And uh, we just started adding features. Right. You know what I'm saying? The features. Let's talk about your features. Who you all have on this album, man? Because, uh, like, coming out the gate with these type of features. Yeah. How do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how was the clearances? How was the, you know, what was man, the way? Was, uh, oh, was this all homie love? Or what was going say, on? On the cool, man. On the cool, like, uh, even with short. You know what I'm saying? Like, on the album, we got short. Short and Flip are probably the two biggest features on the album. Yeah. Uh, Nitro's on there, Kano's on there. Uh, but those are all just kind of like relationship. And Nitro hard. Yeah, Nitro, Nitro yeah. is on there. Yeah. Uh, shout out to him too, man. Yeah. Shout out to him. So, uh, they were all kind of like relationships that we had through our, through our people. You know what I'm saying? Our people had relationships with them already. So we had partners that were like, that owned the clubs out here, that were doing everything. So when they would bring these guys to town, uh, we would, you know what I'm saying, do a jam with them. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So they knew that they knew who we was and how we rocked, so it wasn't really that hard. Right, it wasn't that hard. No, nah, it wasn't that hard. So with most of these, y'all was in studio. Yeah. Together yeah. and stuff like that. Y'all ain't have y'all footage, y'all ain't, ain't record anything. Man, no, man, that's, that's, that's one thing that, I wish more of us did back then. You right. Know what I mean? Yeah, remember, it wasn't no camera phones. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember we had the big VH1s, we had this tape. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? You know, put a bag on the shoulder type <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, nah, man, I wish we did, man, but those were good times, man. That The session with Flip was really cool. Um, and we actually had a good relationship with them, too, on the business uh, side. And uh, the short one was cool because. Short came in and brought a big old bag of, uh, man, I don't know, that shit was like not a highlight of green, just right. I'm talking about some, some, some dang, some boy say, man. Some dang. Yeah. Ooh, he, yeah, man, yeah, say. That was, that was a fool. Yeah, I know, I did a show with two short out there in, uh, who was that, uh, Mississippi, it was the, the golf, golf port, some of Mississippi. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying, we did a show out there, man, and yeah, that boy had some. Boy had some fire. Yeah. <laughs> Back then, too, I was like, ooh, man. Yeah, that ooh, wee. So, was food. What, what did this album take you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what you know, like, what was your whole goal, I mean, your whole process with that album when it came out? Man, on the cool, it was really trying to make some waves outside of Dallas. Right. You know what I'm saying, that's really kind of my goal. Uh, honestly, because uh, we felt like we had we had people in Dallas that supported us. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? The radio was playing stuff. Um, DJs were doing stuff. We were in the clubs. You know right. what I'm saying? So it was really trying to get outside of Dallas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Use that to our advantage. So we did a deal with uh, Southwest Wholesale for that album. Okay. To be the okay. distributor. So to try to give it a bigger uh, push outside of Dallas. And how did that turn out with Southwest? Uh, that was cool, man. Uh, I can tell you a funny, sto funny story about that. So we did the deal. They knew we had the features, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I remember Southwest is pushing everybody right. from H-Town at, at the time, really from the South at the time. And um, so we set up a meeting with them to go down there to discuss the rollout. We shoot down there. Um, to their office, right? Right. And uh, we tell them we hear whatever, they make us sit in the lobby. You know what I'm saying? We just sitting there, watching people come in and right. out, in and out. Uh, we keep asking, well, what's up with the meeting? You know what I'm saying? Well, he just, he said, give us some time. We'll, 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 we'll. The lady, she come out and say, well, he, he's not here today. He's not coming in today. So we're like, okay. Now, you know, they trying to play us or whatever. So we call, uh, uh, Hump at the time, Hump was running Sucker Free. Uncle Hump? Yeah, Hump and uh, him and, him and Flipper still rocking, you know? Mm -hmm. So we called him. He said, man, come by the crib. So we go by the crib, we chop it up. And uh, he, he we tell him the story about what happened. He said, they did y'all like that? He's like, yeah. He said, well, hold on one second. And they got on the phone, made a couple phone calls, and they came up there with us. And uh, as soon as we got there, Straight straight to the back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Straight to the back. They like, okay, yeah, my bad. We didn't know who y'all was and we're gonna do this, we got this laid out, this laid out. I mean it was a whole different situation because yeah, I remember these boys was generating a lot of bread. You know what I'm right, saying? Like they right. would get checks every week. Right, you know what I'm saying? Big checks, you know what I'm saying? So uh when they introduced us that we got a different type of love. And uh that that, that worked out real good. So what was the what was y'all 
hoping to get from South uh, I mean Southwest Wholesale. You know what I'm saying? Just a big push, man. That's how we want really want it, right? Was. So what they for a push? So what they giving out? Was they giving out checks or it was more like? It would, it, would be based the on, it would be based on pre-orders, you know what I'm saying? Like, they would actually go get pre-orders. Okay. So, um, I don't know how much, uh, really, the record store business, the way it works is, back then, anyway, right. they would send you a catalog of auto releases that they had, and then auto releases that get ready to come out. Right. So, you would know, like, a week or two weeks in advance what's about to drop, and stores could order, you know what I'm saying, pre-order. Right, what they want. Yeah, so based on what you did there, you could go ahead and get a nice little, little chunk of change. You know what I'm saying? Before the album even drop. Because right. you already know these are gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to ship, of course, a lot more. Okay. Yeah. So what's the difference between that, then, then I mean, there, mm -hmm. and then now? Oh, uh, man, the, it, it, the money. <laughs> <laughs> the money, man, I mean, that was right. it. So. Even with What You Need came out, I would stand out outside at Big T and sell a hundred What You Needs right. a day. Right. I mean, uh, literally, a hundred a day. On a Sunday, I go out there at Big T, I sell them car to car, a hundred at a time. So the CDs were just, just good money. You know right. what I'm saying? It, it was like, good money. it was good money. Everybody yeah, had a CD fits. player, everybody was rocking that in the car, so you could just, you know, you can sell to somebody on the street. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Man, that's crazy. That's what we did. So what, what man, like, what would you do different then that you know from now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, probably wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have stopped. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like, the, when you stop, it, you have to start all over again. Right. You feel me? So. Had 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 we not kind of just stopped or hit the brakes, uh, at that time it, it, things would have been a lot different. I mean, what was going on at the time? Because I remember right, like you, like you say, like when your album dropped, like you say, you already had uh, your song on the radio. Mm -hmm. Awesome, all that was ringing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was just now like both our albums was really just right. you know what I'm saying coming in and then really real like it was just. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was the what was the demise of? Uh, well, it really, it really, it really just was like a, uh, I wouldn't call it, you know, at one time I felt like it was a demise. I wouldn't call it a demise now because okay. we kind of really uh, uh, still writing the story. Right. You feel me? But, uh, you know, when 24 passed away, man, it was like, that was like cutting off the head. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my nigga was like, you know, he believed in all of us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like from the jump, you know right. what I mean? He was like, he was that dude, and it came to like putting it all together. When he died, it was like, we didn't really know what to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, we have been so close that we kind of learned the business from him at the same time. So we right there at the meetings and doing the deals, so we learned a lot. Um, but just to take it all over right then was like, it was just, it just felt crazy. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like, it was just crazy. Yeah, we all were young at the time, yeah. too. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, what helped y'all, you know what I'm saying, bring it back to life? What, 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 what was that spark? What was that inspiration? Uh, man, really, um, so probably like, uh, you know, when, during that time period, we weren't really releasing albums. Like, uh, Blow was still cooking, you know what I'm right. saying? Blow did the vet, he ain't heard yet. We produced that, right, right. helped produce that. And, um, Talking about the one with the, uh, the airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah helicopter yeah, on that yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then <coughs> he started working with some uh, other people as well, so he was still cooking, you know right. what I'm saying? So I was getting a little bit of that through him. But as far as me making music, uh, I kind of stopped for a second, but then I kept kind of like recording. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Recording. So I did a couple of mixtapes and um, really low key, just kind of get my ideas out. But uh, what really made me crank it up like I'm cranking it up now right. was uh, in 2020, um, really 2021, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I kind of was like, man, just, I, I kind of just went, kind of fell into a situation of like, I needed an outlet, you feel right. what I'm saying? I right. needed something to kind of like do creatively, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, I just said, man, I got to crank this back up. I just felt like now is the time, you know what I'm right. saying? I had uh, got me a crib out in Atlanta in 21, so I'm going back and forth from there a lot. 
and I'm noticing in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? In Atlanta, for those that don't really know, they don't play a lot of new music in Atlanta. They play a lot of old music in Atlanta. Okay. Like you go to any lounge, you go to any hookah bar, right. whatever, they playing older music. Right. Old South shit, old R&B. Not a lot of new stuff. Right. I kept thinking like, man, they playing shit I ain't heard in a long time. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> right. for real. Like, playing that shit out everywhere you go. So I'm like, I start thinking like, man, we got this, we got this catalog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got all these songs that we did and songs that ain't been out yet. And it's got, it just sparked the idea of like, man, I'm finna crank it back up, get all these old stuff out and some new stuff out. Right, right. And build this catalog up because... Every day it was somebody old, uh, older act rather performing right. in the eight. You know what I'm saying? Every day, '69 boys on Monday. You know what I'm saying? It would be uh, uh, franchise boys on Tuesday. Right, I mean, right, it'd be right. Pastor Troy on Wednesday. Right, it would right. be. You know what I mean, like everybody. Hey, everywhere Kiki you go, Thursday. it's music too. Yeah, that's another yeah. thing I know about in Atlanta. I'm talking yeah. about any, you could pop up anywhere. It's a DJ somewhere live in there or yeah. something. But when you go to there, it, just pay attention to the music you mm -hmm. hear when you go in places. Dog. It ain't, they don't play new music. They play a lot of their older stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like give it, keep it giving stuff like Right, right. And those acts are still like doing shows. They still out there, yeah, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So I was like, man, we got the same thing here. You right. know what I'm saying? It, it, it just don't make no sense that we don't have that here. So I said, I'm going to try to carry that flag to really kind of not only light my fire, but light the fire of these other niggas right, too. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, uh, blow with money and cotton and so I'll be on them like right. I get on them tough like man we gotta crank it up okay what's the what, what's the, okay what what's, what is the problem with that because like I had posted some stuff in my stories today one about uh, my, my, uh, my, my boy uh, Mr. E you know yeah. what I'm saying director Mr. E and then I also had posted one from um uh, Boss Talk 101 podcast yeah. and they were asking uh, well, what, what, what E asked the question you know what's wrong with Dallas you know why we don't have our own sound we, we, I yeah. want to know before I get to the other question what is wrong with Dallas why are we not in a position to play or have uh, an area set up I heard for our our legends or yeah. the ones before us to continue to make money on you know out here or well, what's what's the what's what, what's wrong with Dallas? Man, uh, honestly, uh, I'm glad you asked me that because I hear I, I see that a lot. People talk about that. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's nothing wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being honest, which I think everything we did. I think people in Dallas don't understand how big we did it outside of Dallas. Right. Like, I, I travel a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just telling people that I know, I still to this day at my age know dudes that ain't been to Fort Worth. Right. Let alone been on a plane and been to LA or been to, you know what I'm saying? Right, I know right. niggas ain't never been to Fort Worth, my nigga, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. real talk, in right. their 40s. They ain't never right. been to Fort Worth, you hear me? Right. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, People don't realize how much of an impact we got out here, dog. Right. Like on the cool, I'm, I'm just. It's, that's facts. You know what I'm saying? I don't think nothing's wrong. I think the thing that we need is we got to get the hustle back. The hustle. You know what I'm saying you gotta you gotta get outside of here to really understand what's happening. You know what I'm saying like uh, last year I got on the road a lot, started so doing a couple of shows, different areas like Lubbock and um, Amarillo. And when I'm going to these places last year, I mean, they still playing our stuff. Right. The stuff they were playing back then, they were playing it in the club. You know what I'm saying? People, they don't even know. I, when I got back, I would call niggas and like say, man, they, they playing your song in the club in Amarillo. Right. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it's got to be some money out there for you. You know what I'm saying? So if they playing it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, man, I would call niggas and say, bro, they just played your shit. In, in, I'm in ATL right now. They just played your shit. Man, y'all done cranked this real to real up. I mean, y'all got merchandise. Yeah. Y'all out here sponsoring Rockstar. Man, shout out Rockstar one more time. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got, you know, what 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 is this downstream click in this in this conglomeracy of, of real to real? What, yeah. What's the vision of it? Because I see right now you got things in motion mm -hmm. that most people take a long time to really yeah. do, you know what I'm saying? Really, it's just, uh, um, it's, it's just, I got a really clear vision of what's gonna happen. Like, right, right now I'm in year two of a five year plan that I have. Okay. So I got a really clear vision, man. So it feels like it's moving pretty fast, but really, 
it's really playing catch up. You know right. what I'm saying? We got so much music in the vault that it's like that could be that could come out now. You know what I'm saying? It's a matter of kind of managing that, building that catalog, and then also uh, working in the new stuff. Right. So, uh, so yeah, it, it it wasn't hard to really get it going that fast. Right, right, it right. It's just a right. matter of just doing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I see a lot of things in the game that need to be changed. That's for damn sure. But, but uh, it'll get there. Okay. What I want to ask the other question about the boss talk one on one was yeah. that B Hamp was saying, you know, like. The, you hear the sound, you see the music, you see the dances that people doing today on TikTok and all this, mm -hmm. all the stuff that is coming from Dallas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like we have a real heavy influence on this hip hop industry as a whole? Man, absolutely, man. Absolutely. That stuff that we did in Dallas that is uh, part of everyday life in a lot of places. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, like I said, if if you if you travel if you're from Dallas and you travel like you already know you go certain places you're gonna hear you know what I'm saying Dallas slang you're gonna see somebody that got a shag you're gonna see somebody that you know what I'm saying I mean that's just you gonna I'm telling you it's gonna happen man right. it's just that I think we just don't really see uh, right. it's hard for us to see the impact of what we have if we only hear right or if we only worried about here right you know what I'm saying so so it's about venturing out yeah man real talk it, 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 and, and salute to those guys that are still out there I run into them all the time man I mean it's, it's some guys out there still getting booked you know what I'm right. saying they're doing shows every weekend you know what I'm saying it's still to this day yeah. right they, they may not be doing a lot here or you see it but I see them they right. out there so well, what's so okay? You know, for for the ones out there who don't know, what, what's the process of really booking a show? How do you go about booking shows? Is it by having representation? Is it about you know just getting out there and meeting people at shows and, and getting them to, and getting them lined up? Well, uh, that's one thing that I do like about the internet yeah. is that you know what I'm saying if, if you have social media, you literally have everybody's phone at your, in your phone. I think you, you ain't know what I'm saying like. Uh, one thing that's changed is the music business is always going to be the same, right. but the music industry is totally different. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it ain't no industry no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't need no booking agent, right. artists. Y'all yeah, don't need no manager. You know what I'm saying? I, you don't need a manager. Just, just, you don't need them at all. If you got a manager, I feel for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a manager. You just... If you're that lazy, you need a manager, bro. You may need somebody to answer the phone. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you don't need no manager, man. It, every, everything's right there. Right. So if I want to get into a market or a club, I would just find out what club is popping on Instagram, whatever. I would just call them. Right. I shoot, I call them, man. Who's your DJ? What nice is he DJ on? You right. know what I'm saying? The owner of the club told me to give you a call. We out of Dallas. Whoop, whoop. I'm going to sing some music. Right. And uh, the DJs will get you hot. Cause he gonna want to make a little bread, bringing right. you down there. Right. I was on you Clubhouse the other day. They was talking about the, the, the they, you know, the, uh, what they say. Uh, he was talking about the uh, super, the music supervisors, like for you know Netflix and mm -hmm. video games. They, they say they the new age DJs now. Man, that's why I say the industry ain't, ain't, it ain't, what, ain't it, what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like, that's how public. You know, if you wanna, your publishing now is, that's it. That's right. the only way you gonna get it. You, Cause you gotta remember. Publishes when it's played on the radio right. or your video on BET or mm -hmm. whatever, you know what I'm saying? But when those opportunities are gone, the movies are the only way to get really get the publishing. Right. So that's why you see a lot of these bigger acts, you know, selling their publishing now for 100 million, 150 million. Cause, right. You know, the publishing just ain't, ain't what it is. The mechanicals are gone up, but. Right. The publishing royalties. Yeah, I know, and, and, and then yeah, and then the regular royalties, just the writer royalties and stuff, ain't really ain't ain't fifty. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? They ain't fifty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but you know, you, you got to get it some type of way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, okay, what, what kind of advice could you get anybody? You know what I'm saying? To try to walk into these shoes. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the music industry today, or the music business today, yeah, it's today because yeah. it's, it's it's like, it's like, I was, I man, I don't mean to go on, but yeah, I just know that. I be listening to a lot of podcasts. I, I you know, I, I read a lot. You know what I'm saying? And plus, you know, I be going to school. You know, and they just talk about how you know a lot of people. It's you know, it's a spinning wheel sometimes because you know you spend artists spend more money. Yeah. Than they actually really 
you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. receive. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, an artist is being more debt right. than they actually really receive yeah. until they get to that point to where right. they can really have that, that leverage. You know what I'm saying? So what advice could you give? Well, you, you said it right there. Yeah. Um, uh, artists can do that. Artists can spend more money and be in debt, or, or he don't have to. Right. <clears throat> like for real, like I'm just let me just be a, a testimony. You don't right. have to be in the red. Right. You know what I'm saying you can operate any business for a profit. You know what I'm saying if you just if you're willing to do the work. You know what I'm saying if you're willing to do the work and hustle, you don't, you can operate at a profit. You know what I'm saying it's it's not that hard. Now you, what you spend money on, you need to make your money back. Right. But uh, I would tell guys, don't be so worried about being famous. Just just focus on getting money. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Sometimes you can't have both. Right. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So you got to make a decision early in your career when you first start. Do I want to be famous or do I want to get? Do I want to be rich? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it it looks different. In the yeah, end. It, it looks really, totally it different. Really, it really is. is. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's like an opposite. You feel yeah. me? You know what I'm saying? You can look and tell if, if they really, you know, how they doing, but just, you can look at the fame factor sometimes. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Man. The more money, you, the, the guys that really got the bread, right. the fame ain't a big thing for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they, they just pop out when they need to, they get their bread, they do what they got to do. But the ones that's really just riding off their fame, they, you can't make money and be famous. Right. Not in the rap game. Not in the rap game because everything everything costs. The more yeah. famous you cop, the right. more famous you are, rather, the more it's gonna cost you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the platforms eat more though. Like man, you man, you get the distribution, the, yeah. all those. You know what I'm saying? The the uh, the, uh, the YouTube's and because you paying, the, you know, you paying them for subscriptions and services and all right. that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You getting pennies and pennies, but. But it's still ways if you really, like you say, if you, if you know how to yeah. Yeah, maneuver, yeah, you can make that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's yeah, true. Yeah, you know, the, the internet's changed that, man. It's yeah. just like, I, I tell guys all the time, you gotta like, you gotta, you gotta, that's why I say don't have a manager because you need to do this shit on your right. own. Right, right. That'll keep you busy from fucking around in the streets and doing some dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? If you focus on your career, mm -hmm. you, you won't have time for none of that None of that, no, nothing that's going on in the streets. Right. Because you gotta, that's gotta be 24-7, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be working there like you're working anything else. And you think that's why music is redundant today because a lot of artists not expressing really themselves and just, you know, going out and venture around different music instead of doing the same thing or try to, you know, follow that wave. I think, uh, uh, I think that's, I think you always gonna have people that follow the wave. Right. I think it's just more people now. Right. Doing it, period. You right. know what I'm saying? If you think about even rap in the past, there were several guys that just rode the wave of right. somebody else or sounded like somebody else. That's right. gonna be always be the case. That's right. just that's just music. But um, it's just more people now right. because it's just easy and accessible. What's different is that now dudes get money, then they wanna rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, Versus right. I wanna rap. Right. And then I'm gonna get some money out of rapping. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now right. now it's like nigga, I got I got some bread. Right. I I should be rapping. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a little money. I should be rapping. Rap. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, like, rip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's, right. you know. I mean, like, because it, like, it, 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 it's, 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 it's kind of confusing because, like, that's the whole point. Like, I said, I'm trying to rap to get the money. Yeah. And then, sure, hell, I got the money, so now it's time to rap. Yeah, so I it's kind of. You know, you know? So I got the bread. <laughs> I'm fucking around out here. So it go hand in hand. <laughs> I'm in the clubs. I need to be. I need to be rapping. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So man, what you getting into, man? What you like? You ain't getting into no movies. You ain't gonna write no script about the real, the real. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah. That's that's uh that's see that that's what I'm saying. I got this five year vision. Right. And the movie is happening uh, this year as well. We're gonna start shooting the movie this year. It's gonna be the. Uh, it's gonna be uh, some men blow putting together. Okay, who filming this? Uh, we working. We, we okay, see, okay, we, all right. Get at us, you know. Get at us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's gonna be what's up. Yeah, so we working on that. And, uh, we got a. Uh, uh, we already, as you know, we put out a lot of music recently. So right, right. We got more music coming. Uh, Blow fire overdose too. Yes, that's yes. coming. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If y'all right. if y'all a fan of the overdose, you know it's a heavy, compilate compilation yeah. type of album. Mm -hmm. We doing songs with a lot of different guys. So graphic scene. We went, yeah, we went back in that bag, and uh, he's doing songs with a lot of a uh, lot of guys around here. Yeah, man, who yeah. did y'all graphics? 
Uh, non-stop. Non-stop did that? Non-stop, man. What? What? Non-stop hey. is my spot, man. Shout out to Aaron, man. Yeah, Aaron done did that, man. That's yeah, like why he always spot. say. Yeah, like he did, I, yeah, he did He did the plaque. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? Shout, Shout out. out man. man, yeah, he got down on you that. Should you should get him on here. He got plenty of stuff. Yeah, I got to get him on here, man. man. Can, give me man, say, man, give me some give me some Dallas history, yeah, man. Yeah, the people that might not know it. Man, I know you got some history, some stories we might not know. Man, I could give you a lot of stories. Man, give me, man. give me one or two. <laughs> oh man, uh, shit, man. I give you a lot of stories, man. So like during that time when I wasn't really dropping music, I was doing mixtapes. You know, okay. So, but uh, but then I really wanted to focus on kind of the the business side. You know, trying to learn that side. So uh, I started really like uh, just moving around. Right. Mess with different folks. You know what I'm saying. Um, kind of just staying in the mix, networking or whatever. So I used to do the, uh, I don't know if you remember like the summer music conference and all that. Yeah, I used to help put all that together. Okay. And uh, uh, my dog Mike Moose, when shout out to him. Mike Moose. Yeah, we said we, uh, I was helping with that, trying to just learn and kind of network. You know, right. he, he was setting to play, but we was in there working out, working out jelly. You know what I mean? I'm getting everybody number. I'm saying connected with everybody, and so I did. Uh, I did smoke in the city one uh, at that time. Then I had like uh, who I was on there, like Tony Yayo had the clips on there. <clears throat> so we did some songs and whatever had, had all that on there. And so I put the album out. You feel me? Right. And uh, but I only pressed up maybe like a thousand. And uh, so I took them to the store. Uh, I can't think what name of that store was. Anyway, it was in the mall somewhere, and uh, I put this. I put the CD in the store, and literally by the time I got back to the crib, the dude that called me like, "Man, we out. Like we out of a mall." You know what I'm saying? For real? It's like, yeah, we out of. So through that, so I didn't give him to no other stores but that store. Right. And he just went through all of them in like two weeks, man. That was like, it was a, it was a major play. I was like, okay. This was going on, you know what I'm saying? It was a major play. So I kept just working that angle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I could have just taken all the money and dumped a bunch of money into it and did all right. that, but I'm just gonna take this little Right, so yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this little bread real fast. Yeah, yeah. It's ten every couple weeks, you know. <laughs> and just work like this. Sometimes you gotta like when you when you look at it as a music business, sometimes you gotta work your play like right, that. Right, 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 right. You, you know gotta work your play sometimes. That's how you stay making money versus Put yourself out there in the red, you know what I mean? Yeah, ain't never lying. They gonna buy something, they gonna give it to you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Gonna let they go and put something else out there. Yeah, but that was cool, man. So we hooked up with them and it was dope, man. So, man, who, who you always wanted to work with that you never got a chance to work with in the industry in Dallas? Ooh, man, it's a lot of niggas in Dallas, man. Oops. I ain't gonna lie, it's a lot of niggas. There's more niggas in Dallas than outside of Dallas. But who you always wanted to work with that you never got the chance to work man, with? Man, uh, shit, man. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Uh, it's a lot of niggas, man. Me and Gator never done a song together, although we uh, crossed paths plenty of times. And uh, we used to do shows together all the time. Uh, I'm trying to think who else, man. Oh, you been on the road with Gator, huh? Yeah, me and Tucker ain't never did nothing. Okay. Uh, I done something with pretty much everybody else. I'm thinking about. It's a lot of young cats. Young right. cats I want to do some jams with too. Yeah. Ain't gonna lie, man. They're like, I want to get some with like Yellow Beezy and yeah. get some with Trap Boy. And, I mean, because they they young, but you know, so they still repping the same thing we right. was rapping. Right. You know it's what I'm saying? Yeah. Fast. So. I, I fuck with them, man. I fuck with them. I already, yeah, I already see them. that boy Gunna Meezy, huh? Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I shout out Gunna. Too, man. You know what like I'm saying? I, say, I, I honestly like what these young niggas doing, man. Right. Like, I'm the cool, man. Like, I ain't I ain't just no, like, a hating ass nigga. Right, right. Of that. They, them niggas is doing their thing. Right, right, and right. And I wish, right. I just wish the city would support them more, man. Like, that's what, what it takes, bro. What, okay, but you said the support in the city. Okay, what, where is the support lacking in the city at? I mean, like, which is, is it more press? Is it more, uh, uh, um, man? It's just like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we have to push our line, man. You know right. what I'm saying? Like these other cities push their line. You right. feel me? Like, H Town has always done that. You know right. what I'm saying? When, when, 
when they have a star that's in H Town, they they make sure that nah, nigga, this is this is us. You know what I'm saying? They always rep it. They don't try to hate on it or none right, of that. You know right. what I'm saying? But here, they just start hating. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's just, that's just what <coughs> Dallas is always done, man. We've had a lot of, we still have a lot of super talent, man. So, right. Like we gotta go more party, yeah, you know. We, we gotta, gotta go more party, you know what I'm saying? Hating man, it just, yeah. you know. That they, they say that hey, hey nigga, they hate hey, club. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, is a fool, man. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, though, it's just you know, it's crazy, to me, man. That right. That's still a uh, issue, bro. Cause we got some niggas here that that that's out. They could really that's really out here putting on for us. Right, right. You right, know what I'm right. saying? Like I said, if you don't go outside of Dallas, nigga, you can't argue with me about it. You know what I'm saying? Now you gotta get outside and see what's going on. In right. other cities, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it's niggas out here pushing their line, man. We just don't, we don't support them here. Right, right. Is it and do you think is it? Do you think it's the um, the way how the artists that came up and ain't nobody really opened up a gate or showed them a certain way to how to get the bag in the music or how to give them that, that outlet, you know? Or uh, is it, you know, because I see a lot of things in Dallas, and I know Dallas always been like the number one or top five hub as yeah. consumers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before, yeah. you know, anything else come here. Is it. But you know what, though? Like, even though we always been a big market, like for music in particular, like you were saying, uh, that's changed. Right. That ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? It was like that because we could, because the radio. Right. The radio made it like that. You know what I'm saying? We had two stations. They were the number one and number two stations in the whole market. Uh, and you could get your song on there. You right. feel me saying? Right. If you, right. you spend a little money, you can get your song on there. Right. You feel me? So there was a hub for that. It was like the record labels would come here because shit, they could get they get their songs played. I mean, who was breaking down the doors for us to even get on K one hundred and four? Because you remember at the time K one hundred and four, you remember they were they were they was against rap. Yeah, at certain, at one period of time they was man. I mean, but when they were the only station, it was a lot harder. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, when nine seven nine came, it kind of uh, that that was really the first station that showed us love. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all remember, but like when 979 first started, it wasn't no DJ. Right, it just it running. Was just, it was just songs. Right. But the only songs that were playing were the same ones. So one of those songs was was Dig That. You know right. what I'm saying? Low song. <laughs> so I was rocking with that. You know what right. I'm saying? It wasn't no DJs. His song would just come on. And uh, they used to play that Big Gibbs song a lot. And it was just like a bunch of mix of other stuff. You know what I mean? So they were the first ones to really show us some love, man. So. We started doing a lot more uh, with them. Right, right, right. Yeah, they right, were showing right. some love back then. That was Big Bink. Shout out to yeah, Big, Big Bink. Bink. Yeah, Big uh Bink. -huh. Yeah. I first met Bink. I didn't even know he was on the radio. You know what right. I'm saying? We just kicking it, hanging out, kicking it all the time. And then one day, I was like, man, what's up? Where you DJ at? He said, oh, I'm the program director at the radio station. I said, man, what? We've been sitting there kicking it this whole time? I don't know who you is, you know what I'm saying? And, and sure enough, the next weekend, it was it was rolling. It was rolling. It was rolling. Man, yeah. man. Shout out to Big, man. Man, shout out to Big, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what, like, what, so, like, do you think, like, it was the, is it, what was it, what would we lacking? Because it's like, you like the support, like, is it, yeah. is it more of the media support? Is it more, what, what kind, cause what can, what can, what can we really do to? Man, niggas just out we gotta, man, look here, man. We gotta just support our people, man, that's it. You right. know, a lot of, I, what bothers me is just a lot of, uh, what you, what you do, I, I would consider what you do as, as media. Right. You know what I'm saying? You actually are talking to people and, Telling the story, um, I would consider what you do as media, but some of this other stuff I see, I don't consider that media. Right. Where it's always focused on just some stuff said in the street or some gossip or he say, she say. I, I, that's not media to me. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, in Dallas, we love drama. Right. You know what I'm saying? We love drama. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that grew up in Dallas got drama. Right. You feel me? So, <laughs> I'm just saying, you got drama. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It, it could go down at any time. Yeah, you know any time. I mean? You'll you, never you know really what it is. You grew up out here. Yeah, yeah. You could be anywhere. Yeah. At um, any age. 
And it can happen, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It can be like, okay, all right, we finally crossed paths. Right, right. So uh, we love drama, man. I just wish that we would focus on supporting these guys versus trying to tear them down all right, the time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like they'll get on live and be beefing, and they'll have more views in their video. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They'll have more views in an interview. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so when you hustling and you young, what you going to do? What What's going to get you the most attention? The beef? Or your music. If right. the beef is, nigga, we riding with the beef. Yeah, they won't know how many body we counts get some, you got. We get, money. We get money off the beef. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I can't knock niggas for doing that. That's why I say it's on us to support other stuff besides the beef. Right. They not going right. they gonna they gonna go where the money is. Right. If I know I can diss this nigga and all this and that's when my I'm gonna get shows, I'm gonna get paid, I'm gonna get more followers. Then that's what I'm gonna do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, I remember that industry, they used to pay for that back in the day. Yeah, they man, pay big for do. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, you do. You don't know, I don't care. Just make it up. You know But if we were like, man, look, that's lame. We don't really care about that shit. Right. Nigga, where your new song? Where your new song? Let me hear the heat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. saying? If we would just focus on yeah. that part, they would leave our let alone. Who you got your eye on the city right now? Who who got man, uh, uh, killing something right now? I don't want to say too much because I'm trying. I'm trying to sign a couple of them, so I ain't gonna say too much. Bro. I really, mean, that's cool though. That you reaching know. out and trying to, I'm trying to sign, sign some up. You know what I'm saying? I'm you know. trying to sign a couple of them, but more so to partner with them. Really, right? You know what yeah, I'm saying? right. Like, I don't think nobody really need to be signed, but you can make a strategic partnership. You right. know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, that's a lot of youngsters I like out there, man. I listen to it all, man. I pay attention, man. I try to, you know, stay a student of the game like I was, you know, 30, uh, 20, 30 years ago. You right, know what I mean? Right. So that ain't changed. I still love it. So I'm listening to everybody, man, trying to see what's up. Right. And um, trying to make some good moves. All right. Well, we, okay. So if you can turn back the hand of time, what time will you turn it back to? Mm. Right now. <laughs> already, right now, already, dog. Already, right already, now, already, man. Already, already. Right now. That's what's up. Like, you think about it, man. I mean, because all this stuff we did in the past was great. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, we did some things that were awesome in the past. But, like, now it's like, I got that still. But now right. I'm making new stuff. You know right. what I'm saying? Now I'm accomplishing new things. Right. Trying to stretch myself in different ways. So, I, I love that, what happened in the past. But now is the best time. Real talk. Now it's like the best time. So I know what I know now versus what I knew then. Uh huh. Now it's the best time. Right. So wh- wh- how you hook up with Rock Talk? What's- man, that's a uh, shout out to Money, man. Money, uh, Money helped put put that play together. Okay. Money Waters, man. So we hooked up with Rock Saw and they uh they're showing love to a lot of what they call the originals. You know what I'm saying? Like the OGs. So they got a nice little campaign going that features uh us blow fly, well blow fly myself and then. Some of the other originals as well, Mr. Right. Lucci, Mr. Pookie, DJ Snake, uh, Money Waters, you know what I'm saying? So you'll be seeing a lot of right. stuff out there with them, man. But yeah, it's dope. Y'all, y'all go pick it up, man. Yeah, it's man, y'all make sure y'all go pick that up for sure, yeah, for sure. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for sure. I like I like the whole They got a whole, like, you can tell it's, it's supposed to resemble kind of like the Dallas skyline. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the with the with the bottom. Yeah, with you know the bottom, saying? yeah. So it's supposed to be something like that you to know. that effect. But, uh, Shit, you, you know what it is. Oh, we definitely gonna support that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got our own. You know what I'm saying? Support our own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I see you over there working with money. I see you got the salad coming out. Yeah, yeah, it was man. a great video shoot. Yeah. Man, I saw a lot of guys I ain't seen in a long time. Man, who was all up in there, man? There was a lot of people in there. I seen Big I mean, J. I yeah. seen Lucci, yeah, yeah, Pookie. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about. I'm out. You I'm up in, in there, hey, man? I'm in everybody <laughs> here too. Like, yeah. nigga, like, nigga, what is you doing, nigga? Let's yeah. go, man. Let's go. You know, yeah, B O C up in there, boy. I say, God, I was sitting there trying to put a tour together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I was, facts, I was facts. in there hollering at everybody like, man, we finna all get on the road together. Right. That's, that's another uh, goal of mine is I'm trying to right. get all of us together right. and hit the road. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like in like for a summertime kind of Man, tour. that'd be man safe. Yeah, I talk, I've talked to everybody. I've at least put the bug in the air. Right. But that's something I'm, I'm actively working on right now. A like, nice little little tour, man. Yeah, you know, with us saying. and... Um, Everybody, everybody you named, you know what I'm saying? Bobo, Cotton, 
Lucy put everybody. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. It's so many of them. Yeah, man. It's so Lil hard to learn. And, um, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's so many of them out there. Yeah, yeah shout uptight. Out uptight. Yeah, uptight, man, two times, shout man. Out uptight. Yeah. We got some music together. Oh, you and I tight got some music? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, uptight, man. Yeah, that's my boy right man, there, man. Yeah, nice. nah, man. We got some music together, man. Nah, already, man. Yeah. So, okay, so. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna ask my top three strands that you like to smoke. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? What's your top three strands you like mm. to smoke, man? Right now I'm on this strand called uh called Fetty. Fetty, oh, okay. Yeah, I got it when I was out in Cali not too long ago, man. That that's a that's a bad that's a bad summer gun right there. Oh, okay, I never heard of it. It was like that Fetty Wap. Well, I don't know, but you know the, the dude saw me when I got to the dispensary. You yeah, me? you know he he hustled me. He's like, man, this they just won the cannabis cup and it's the hottest shit we got. I'm like, well, like I take I take a ounce of that thing, you know, see what it do. But uh, that's good. And then um, man, uh, white runs, white runs, white runs. And then the other day I had some uh, red runs. Some red run. Yeah. For okay. The turn me on. Yeah. And that was it. Was all right. Where you get this? Is it out here? It was all right. Yeah. The red runs was out here. Okay. Yeah. All red right. runs was out here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody yeah. need to turn me on some of that red runs, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had did a show at um, uh, South by Southwest last Sunday. Okay. And uh, we picked up that on the on the road. And that was some night. Nice, that was nice. Yeah. What it was like out in South by Southwest, man? Because it was cool, man. You know, we did Sunday, so like uh, a lot of the. Uh, Bigger crowds that kind of died down. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, you know why? Yeah, I heard. Yeah, cause you know I I'm part of that too. Okay. I waiting on my lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> why. Down I, there? Huh? No, I didn't go. You know what I'm saying? I got a lawsuit on them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shout, yeah, shout out South by Southwest. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get our money, man. <laughs> you know, you know, hey man. You know the, the, the words and the views of the program are expressed by. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? They took our money. When the pandemic, oh, when the pandemic hit, you oh, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we had, right? man, we paid, man, we paid for the biggest package. And they canceled it? Man, yes, they right. give us our money back. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? They wouldn't, they wouldn't let you do it the following year? Man, they was trying to, man, say, they tried, they, they, they trying to, try to get, get, they get the following year. We've been on lock almost three years. Yeah, you're right, you're right, <laughs> I've been out here though. I ain't, I ain't I've been, been we've been out. Don't get me wrong, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it ain't been no events. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I so Sunday. I went to Atlanta where it wasn't nothing like. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wide open out there, man. Atlanta, man. That was Atlanta gonna stay. Atlanta, yeah, that, you know that, that city don't stay. Shout out my people out there, man. For real. I mean, we got <laughs> stuck in Atlanta, and I didn't want to leave. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, forget. I said the kids was at the house, yeah. everything. I'm like, we ain't going back. <laughs> I stayed out there, man, for like yeah. about six months last year. Right. Yeah, still got still got the crib out there and stuff. Yeah, yeah. man, it's so much to do. You made every corner you hit, you know. Yeah, that's what that's what really crunked me up, dog. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. It was like when I sit, kept seeing how they were operating out there. I'm like, man, we could do that here, you know what I'm saying? So I started working on smoking the city uh, three. Right. And um, I hooked up with uh, my dog Al B at the Vibe Lab, so shout out to the Vibe Lab. Okay. Little studio, you know what I'm saying? And um, he recorded me, and I was like, yeah, this this is tight. So I started, cr I cranked that out in like probably about a week and a half, you know what I'm saying? Knocked that, knocked that out and put that out last year. What a, yeah, last year, end of last year. Yeah, I'll make sure y'all go cop that. Make sure y'all yeah, sure that. that. Yeah, yeah it's man. doing really well. I'm, I'm happy. It's oh, good. good. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. All right. So, what's your. Give me a give me a funny. You got a fucked up weed story. I know you got a fucked up weed story. Oh man, shit, man. I I got so many of them, man. But you ain't got that one weed story, man. man that one weed story. Yeah, you ain't got no weed story, man. I haven't did my weed stories in a minute. I know people let me went to the Ooh, weed stories. <laughs> it had to be when I was a lot younger. I can't. Man, I, I, I'm sure I got plenty of weed stories. I'm sure I do. So you can't think of one, way. Yeah, I'm sure I got plenty of weed stories. I got, I got to think about that one. Okay, bit, we ain't got the weed stories. There's a lot of math, you know what I'm saying? There's a, the one I'm that sure, fucks sure, you up, you know what I'm saying? Sure you ain't never, you ain't never had one that hit that blunt and the whole yeah. cherry and hit the, and smoke the cherry. Man, I said, look here. Put it, you know, grab it and put the, you know, <laughs> on in and shit, you know what I'm saying? All, All that no bullshit. Shit. All right, man. Loaded, man. So, man, what can we expect for, you know what I'm saying, in the next five years, man, for real to oh, real, man? man. you're going to see a lot, bro. Like, oh, uh, really? we got we got two new mixtapes dropping. Okay. Over those two. And then mine is uh, the Boss Cross 20. It's really an EP. It's uh, some songs that uh, I recently just did that 
that I want everybody to hear. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So uh, that's about to come out. And then um, working on a movie, working on a Sad Boys album, which is me and Blow together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, got some surprises coming. You know what I'm okay. saying? Like, okay. you know, it may be a, a, a hopefully if everything is going like it's supposed to go, maybe a Killer Cotton Field 2 this year. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make that happen. And then uh, uh, I got a screw tape coming out. You know what I'm saying? With the uh, screw shop. You know what I'm saying? That'll be out in June. Okay. Uh, Okay. So, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, so, all right. So, I always ask this question. You know what I'm saying? Before I can let you get the flow. You know what I'm saying? If you was in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself that I didn't ask? I knew you were gonna ask that, man. Yeah, because that's my that's my that's, that's my your question. That's man. my question, man. <laughs> man, uh shit, man. I couldn't um uh, I guess probably man, just uh I think you asked the right question, what was my what was my five year vision, man, because uh that's something I really focused on. Okay. You know what I mean? Like um, I'm out here moving like it's uh, 2003 all over again, you right. know what I'm saying? I'm out here, I'm listening, I'm, my ears are to the street. I'm, uh, we out on the road, we right. out here doing shows. I mean, we're really trying to push this line because five years from now, it's gonna be different, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm trying to really uh, create something, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's gonna be bigger than anybody's ever seen, you know, here, especially from here. So, the positions are coming in place like they're supposed to be. At this point, all I gotta do is just keep maintaining myself you know right. what I'm saying as long as I stay on top of what I gotta do it's gonna be there so uh, it's already going faster than I expected so that's that's really what I'm focused on so I would ask me that question like you know what's that five year vision already you know already so well, okay I got a, I got a question then well, what 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 do you see music in the next five years and then Who's been really supporting you and being in your corner, really rooting for you? Okay, uh, I answer the second question first. Right. You know what I'm saying, I would say Blow. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying, oh, me, really? me and Blow hold each other accountable. You know oh, what I'm saying, really? like I started really jumping out here last year, and I was just you know, like, I'm calling him, like, man, we got to get back on, got to right. get back going. Right. And uh, he hopped on, man, and ever since then, it's been like it's made it go faster. Right. You know what I'm saying, right. so. I would say him. He's been my number one supporter, and I'm, I'm his number one supporter as well. Oh, so really? we just we talk to each other every day, you know, trying to figure oh, out really? you know what's gonna happen. And then as far as uh, the other question about what the music gonna be, uh, I'm just I'm just telling y'all everything gets replaced. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you if you're sitting on music, you feel me? If you uh, if you still feel like rapping, my nigga, get off your couch. Turn this off and uh, get busy, dog. Like, like for real. It's like I would tell everybody, man. You know, now is the time because five years from now, shit, they might not even be artists anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? It may just be computers making all the damn songs. It may not even need you to even come up with nothing no more. Right. Everything gets replaced. You know right. what I'm saying? The, the record got replaced. The tape got replaced. CD. I mean, innovation happens in music first. Right. The world starts changing as music starts changing. Right. The technology, everything. So that's next. You know what I'm saying? I, I for real, I'm serious about that. Five more years. You know what I'm saying? You, you wouldn't need a, a you wouldn't need a person. You know what I'm saying? The computer can make it. You can be performing in the metaverse. The songs can be selling. Hey, they don't I, need you I, for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't need you for that. That's why they buying up all these catalogs and. All this stuff, man. So I would tell people if, if you're doing it, now's the time, man. Right. You need to press your line, you know what I'm saying, and, and get yourself ready for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that takes ownership. So don't worry about taking the fast road. Just make sure you own it all. Facts. You know what Facts. I'm make sure you, <laughs> you own it all. You know what I'm saying? Bro. For real. So, man, all right, man. So where can they get anything? Where can they reach you at, man? Where, you know what I'm saying? The flow is yours. Man, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me man, on. Man, appreciate you, man. I'm giving you like, your flowers, man. I just want to let you know we love yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate You know what I'm saying? Appreciate your contribution, man, to the history and the living. But I want to let you know that I want to appreciate you and your um, contribution that you add to the legacy of Dallas because, you know what I'm saying, you are a legend, you are an icon, and you are in there. You know what I'm saying? I want to appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, y'all, y'all stay tuned, man. More is coming, man.
Y'all follow us on social media, man. We got we got some stuff cooking, man. And, and all those artists out there, man, get with me, man. I mean, we 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 trying to build something, and we're not trying to uh, do it by ourselves. So let's 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 work, man. man straight up, let's real. work. For real, for let's real. work. So where they can reach you at again? Uh, go go on Instagram is at CEO underscore Rife R I F E two one four. Uh, to get me on Instagram is probably the best thing to do. Right, 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 uh, right. I do answer DMs. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm checking them every day anyway. Uh, we got a tour getting ready to jump off. Uh, the Real to Real for Life tour to right. support Blow's album and. Uh, so we, if you want to perform or hit the road with us, make sure you hit me up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, hit me up. So you know what I'm saying? We're finna bring you more, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all y'all coming out smoking with me, you know what I'm saying? Chilling with my boy Rifle, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going down, you know what I'm saying? Triple D stand up for real, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, what? Well, each one teach one, you know what I'm saying? Man, support is free, you know that's my motto, you know what I'm saying? Y'all everybody stay tuned. Everything you need is in the link in the description, you know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all make sure y'all tune in to that rock song, you know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all get y'all blunts, y'all stay lit to life. You know what I'm saying? And tune until the end, and we about to be <laughs> I was into street shit, hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't gonna be shit, but I always knew that I would be.